Greetings everyone, it's Closer Look time again. So this time around I thought we would revisit the Voltron collection because way back in, when was it, like 2008, 2009, like literally a decade ago, I did a three-part video talking about Voltron and talking about the tin sets, giving you kind of a closer look then. But this is before the days of high definition, so it was all just filmed on my old camera. And also, since then, I've acquired a lot more Voltron stuff for the collection, so I thought it was a good time to revisit, give you another closer look in glorious 1080p, as well as take a look at some of the other Voltron stuff that I've acquired in the meantime. So this will be another three-parter, dominating the closer looks for the next three weeks. Hope you enjoy. So... Part one, I thought we'd revisit the Lion sets. Part two, we're going to take a look at Vehicle Voltron. And part three, we're going to take a look at the original Japanese series that were adapted into Voltron. All right, so let's not waste any time. Voltron Lion Force, today on A Closer Look. Welcome back. Okay, so just before we get into checking out these awesome tin sets, a little bit of background info for you. Way back in the early 80s, World Events Productions was kind of shopping around looking for anime to bring over to the U.S., well, the North American marketplace, and translate. So they were checking out a whole bunch of different ones to kind of see which ones they thought might be marketable over here. Now, they wanted something that was kind of along the lines of what Force 5 had done a few years earlier, where they had the giant robots and monsters and stuff like that. Uh, so they were kind of looking for something that could be marketed along those same lines. So out of all the ones that caught their eye, the one that they thought had the most potential was one called Mirai Robo Daltanius. And what that was was basically about a team of young pilots who would essentially fly these different vehicles, one of which looked like a big robotic lion, by the way. Not all five of them, just one of them was a lion. The others were other types of vehicles. And as you would expect, they could be combined into various configurations, including a giant robot. So, you know, sounds kind of familiar. I mean, it was a very popular genre in Japan at the time, the sort of combiner teams. And they wanted to bring one of those over here. And that was the one that caught their eye. So they got in touch with the animation company. And you got to understand, this is before the days of the internet and before the days of Google Translate and such. So uh, the lines of communication were not as clear and as instant as they are nowadays. So basically, they contacted the animation company and said, OK, so we've looked over a bunch of the anime that you sent over. And uh, we'd like to do the one with, uh, with the robot lion, meaning Daltanius. So the animation company said, OK, cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll send that right over. They get the tapes from the animation company. And they pop them in, and it's like, huh, this this isn't the one that we asked for. I mean, it's got it's, well, it's got five robot lions, but uh, this isn't actually the one we asked for. But it's like, well, okay, let's. I mean, this is what they sent. It's going to cost too much to send it back and whatnot. Let's just check it out and see what it is. Maybe we can do something with it. So of course, the show that they were sent was Beast King Go Lion. So that's right, folks. Voltron, as we know it, was the result of a miscommunication. Now, not to be little Daltanius at all, it's a perfectly decent uh, combiner team action-adventure anime, but compared to Go Lion, yeah, no contest. No contest. So they watched a bit of Go Lion, and they were like, hmm, yeah, you know what? I think we're going to go with this one instead, because it's got a little more to it. Um, it was quite a bit more violent than Daltanius. Daltanius was aimed more towards younger viewers. But they were pretty sure that they could retool it and re-edit it in the translation process and make it suitable for North American audiences. So to say that the show was a hit is a huge understatement. It was massive. It just took off like wildfire. And one of the big reasons it took off so much is because they weren't just translating it. They were actually kind of pushing the envelope a little bit of television technology. Specifically, the big thing at the time was the introduction of stereo sound. Now, up until the mid-80s, all television was mono. Everything was mono. There was The only place you could get stereo was on music albums or in movie theaters. 
or if you went out and bought the VHS release of a movie and happened to have a stereo VCR, you could get the sound in stereo that way. But stereo TVs were brand new. There was little to no content being broadcast in stereo. The first two shows to broadcast in stereo were a little show called Miami Vice, which you may have heard of, and Voltron, Defender of the Universe. So both Voltron and Miami Vice got a lot of free publicity by being shown in electronic stores constantly, especially Voltron, because Voltron was a daytime show. So in order to show off the stereo capabilities of these new TVs, the electronic stores would just have Voltron playing all freaking day. And with Voltron basically being the first stereo animated series in North America, uh, the stereo mix was extremely aggressive, like very hard left and hard right and like it, extreme panning back and forth and so forth. So it really showed off the technology. Now fast forward about 30 years, Media Blasters picks up the rights to put out Voltron on DVD. But they don't want to do just a straight up DVD release. No, no, no. There was a few VHS releases back in the day. I think there was even a Laserdisc release or two. But no, they really wanted this to be something special because essentially it was the 30th anniversary of the show or shortly after the 30th anniversary of the show. So they wanted to do something special for this release. So collector's packaging, these beautiful tin sets. Okay, cool. But as for the show itself, they really wanted to give it the most stellar presentation they could. So they got in touch with the original animation company and it turns out they had actually just done high def scans from the original film prints of both Go Lion and Die Rugger. So they got a hold of these new scans, so they had beautiful visuals to work with. What it meant, however, was having to go through every single broadcast master of every single episode and find the shots that were used to assemble the North American version of the episodes. Fortunately, Voltron was a show that used a lot of stock shots, like the transformation sequences and whatnot. But... For the rest of the episodes, they had to kind of pick and choose bits and pieces to fill out the running time to make up for all the ultra-violent footage that had been cut out. So one of the big processes was going through these new scans of the Go Line and Die Rugger episodes and finding all the bits and pieces, comparing it against the broadcast masters, and literally reassembling the episodes from scratch. But the end result is beautiful presentation. I mean, they have never looked better. And then... There's the sound, the aforementioned stereo sound. Now you have to understand just how new this technology was back when they did Voltron. No shows were done in stereo. There was nothing in the production chain that was specifically geared towards doing television shows in stereo. So they wanted to do it in stereo, but how are they going to do it? Well, what they ended up doing was actually treating it like a music album. So they got multi-track reel-to-reel -reel tape recording equipment so that they could do all of the mixing as if it was a music album and that's how they did the sound and then just laid it into the the video later so when media blasters was pulling together all the elements to do the dvd release they got a hold of these multi-track recordings now the tapes were in pretty rough shape they had to go through some physical restoration in order to be playable but what they found was these were full-blown, true multi-track recordings with every single audio element in the entire show on its own unique, distinct, separate audio track. So what that meant was is they could take those original multi-track tapes and do a 5.1 surround sound remix using nothing but the original audio elements. They didn't have to add a damn thing. Everything was there on its own unique separate track so they could remix it and reposition it in the audio space however they wanted without impacting the, the sound at all or having to add anything to it or beef it up at all. They could just use all the existing audio and do a full-blown 5.1 mix with nothing but the existing audio. I mean, that, you have to realize how amazing that is that those elements existed in that form from that era. That's, that's phenomenal. Like, that just never, ever, ever happened. So, long and the short of it is, what we have on these DVDs is the absolute best possible presentation you could ever have for this show. Looks fantastic. Sounds fantastic. You've got the original stereo mix, by the way. The original stereo mix in its original form. Plus, you have a new 5.1 surround mix using nothing but the original source elements. That also sounds amazing. Go ahead, immerse yourself in the world of Voltron. What it might have sounded like if surround sound was the big new thing back in 1984 and not just stereo. 
So that's a lot of back history. Hope you enjoyed. We got a lot of stuff to look at here. So let's head on down to the uh, the Black Void. <laughs> and we'll take a look at the five tin sets for Voltron, Defender of the Universe, Lion Force. Okay, so here's the first tin set. Beautiful collection from Media Blasters, uh, their Anime Works label. So this is, uh, e each of the tins, as you can see, is fully textured and molded. Um, lots of uh, detail there. Beautiful close-up of each of the uh, lions. And if we look on the back here, we have Princess Allura. There we go. So basically, we just pop off the top. You can actually see on the back there just how much uh, texturing there is to the tin it's quite uh, quite nice indeed and then inside we basically have a digipack so nothing no artwork inside just the uh, the tin itself so the digipack very nice we have different artwork again on the cover these were re-released by the way in keep cases that just had uh, j just had the artwork of the lions on the front but all the same disc content. And we take a look on the back. We have Karan and uh, Nanny there. Very cool. And then inside, we got the mice. Got the princess again. Nice shot of, uh, I'm guessing that's Planet Eris. Actually, if we, uh, I think this, yeah. So then inside, basically big digipack. We got all the discs on individual trays and a booklet which we'll take a look at in just a moment little silhouette of voltron there if we take a look on the back yeah it's actually a wraparound cover for the uh the three there so of course got sven as well because he was the original blue lion pilot until he was injured and went away to recover at the hospital in space somewhere yeah those of us who've seen Go Lion <laughs> know what really happened to Sven. So, uh, I don't recall if there's much in the way. Oh, yeah, no, there's, uh, so you got a nice shot of blue Voltron underneath there. Very cool. Yeah, and it's the same under each disc, so we don't need to pop all of them off. But, uh, if we take a look at the booklet... go so just uh, again the nice silhouette on the back so this gives us a breakdown of all the episodes that are on each uh, disc very nice I, I really like how they themed each of these sets after one of the lions it's very nice indeed and then there's a big thing about the restoration here they as I said in the intro there they did a ton of work on the restoration they were really really lucky with uh, the elements that they got, that they were able to do uh, the extensive work that they were able to do. It's it's really quite impressive just how much went into these sets. Uh, so, just like to make sure that it is correct and straight. So, there we go. Put that back in there. And in we go. So, that is the Blue Lion set. Next, we have the Yellow Lion set. Yellow Lion was, of course, piloted by Hunk. There you go. So each set has roughly 15 or so episodes. So it's a good uh, good chunk of viewing there. Uh, once again, we can see some of the texturing on the lion face there. Very nice. And we just pop that off. And same thing again. Uh, they they all follow the exact same design, where they have the uh, the digipack inside. No artwork inside the tin. And then if we take a look at the artwork here, we have this very nice wraparound cover. We've got the mice again. We've got Honk and the Yellow Lion. We've got King Zarkon and uh, Hagar the Witch. And then the nice sort of hero shot of Honk on the back. And then inside, same thing again. We have, in this case, the yellow rendition of Voltron. And... Uh, that's that. And then it does continue the numbering from the previous set. You can see this is discs 4, 5, and 6. 
And then here we have, oh, we got a Media Blasters Fall 2006 catalog. We'll uh, take a peek at that in a minute here. So then much like the first set, this gives us a nice little breakdown of all the episodes on each disc and the special features. Um, should go into the special features, actually. I'll, I'll crack the first set open again in a moment here. Um, actually, we'll go over the special features after, and I'll just kind of give you a look as they go. And then again, stuff about the restoration. Very cool. So Media Blasters Fall 2006 catalog. Look at all this stuff. Oh, you got a registration card and yeah, tons and tons of anime. They uh, they were a pretty big label for that at the time, and uh, some foreign films as well. Very cool stuff. Very good company. They did a lot of really great releases. I don't know that they're really around much anymore, but um, haven't heard word of them for quite some time. But uh, their Voltron sets were uh, were nothing short of spectacular. I mean. As I said uh, in the intro there, I wasn't a huge fan of Voltron growing up. I mean, I thought it was okay. I watched it a little bit. But uh, because of the tone of it, I think, I was more into Robotech at the time, which was much more adult in tone and serious, whereas, uh, whereas Voltron was clearly aimed more at uh, younger viewers. Although, interestingly, production-wise, they are both very similar in that they both took uh, previously unrelated Japanese shows and re-edited them into one sort of uh, saga, which is kind of interesting. With Voltron, I think everything matches up a little bit better because you can easily believe that uh, Vehicle Voltron and Lion Voltron are part of the same sort of line of giant robots, and even the character designs of both uh, are very similar and uh, match up quite well. And so there's, of course, is uh, Pidge, the pilot of the Green Lion, and we open this up. And uh, again, just kind of give you a look at some of the texturing there. Yeah, Green Lion is a little a little more curvy than the others. The uh, Blue Lion and uh, Red Lion are more um, angular, I guess. But uh, I think they were the feet. And uh, these ones, uh, uh, Green Lion and Red Lion, were the, uh, were the arms. So they needed to be a little bit more curvy, I guess, to grab onto things better and stuff so there we get the uh i can't actually remember their their names i know the characters but i can't remember who they were but uh i remember he was quite the spitfire of a character there and pidge of course uh was also a huge friend of the space mice he got along really well with them and uh previously they were really only friends with the princess but uh but he very quickly got on their good side and they became good friends so there we go, and I'll just give you a look at the the green Voltron. There you go. And again, continuing the numbering, we have discs 7, 8, and 9. There we go. And the booklet. Again, more uh, summaries of the discs. It's not that the episodes on these sets are particularly pertaining to one line or another. I mean, it's just the episodes in chronological story order. Um, they just decided to theme them for, uh, you know, just kind of make them a cool collectible. Uh, so again, more information about the restoration. Just to, I mean, to give you some idea just how much work went into it. They, they tell you the story of the restoration over the course of it. So here we have the Winter 2007 Media Blasters catalog. So lots of, uh, New stuff in there. Oh, Grizzly. There we go. I think I got a Blu-ray release recently. So yeah, they had like a lot of uh, a lot of cult films as well. Actually, they were quite a good good label for stuff like that for people like like us who like all that obscure stuff that the uh, you know general public may not be as familiar with or appreciate as much as we do. So. Here we go. Put that all back together. Again, make sure it's all aligned nicely. All right. And then next we have the Red Lion set. Very nice. Piloted, of course, by Lance, who uh, was voiced by Michael Bell, actually, who is the, uh, the voice of Duke on G.I. Joe. 
he actually did a lot of voice acting uh, in the 80s. He was kind of one of one of the voices of my childhood and uh, later went on to teach voice acting to prospective young voice actors, which is pretty cool. There's some pretty good interviews with him on the uh, G.I. Joe and Transformers uh, collector's editions that Shout Factory put out. Specifically the big box sets. They weren't on the, uh, the individual sets. There we go. And here we have Sven <laughs> in uh, the original Go Lion. This was actually Sven's twin brother. Uh, it wasn't actually Sven, but uh, in this one they just said it was Sven so that they didn't have to kill him off. Spoilers! <laughs> uh, so again, this 11, 12, uh, 10, 11, 12. And I think this actually brings us to the end of the um, original 52 episodes that were adapted from Go Lion, and we get into the Queen Merla storyline. Uh, now, this is one way in which Voltron uh, kind of excelled beyond Robotech, because Robotech, they tried to do a sequel with the involvement of the original production companies, but uh, for whatever reason, for, well, a variety of reasons, Winter 2007, I think this is the same catalog. Yeah, this is the same catalog as the other one. But um, the, the Robotech sequel was never completed. They, they got a few episodes done, and then they never finished it. But in this case, uh, with Voltron, World Events Productions did basically the same thing, where they got the involvement of the original production company that did the original sh uh, shows and said, hey, Lion Force Voltron has been like a huge hit. We'd love to co collaborate with you and do some new episodes. So they did. They actually, got, you know, using the, the original production company, they created 20 new episodes of Lion Force Voltron, um, after the defeat of Zarkon. So they, they had um, Queen Merla show up as the new big baddie, and they did uh, a new 20-episode saga. So there's actually more episodes of Lion Force Voltron than there were of Go Lion originally, which is kind of kind of cool. Uh, so this, of course, is the final collection, the Black Lion collection, and there is Keith, the leader. Of course, they saved the Black Lion for last because that's uh, easily the most significant one. forms the body and the head of Voltron. Red and green are the arms, yellow and blue are the um, feet and legs. And there we go. Oh, what is what is this? Oh, oh, that's cool. They had a couple of bonus discs in here. I got Tweeny Witches, a uh, preview disc, and an Anime Works trailer disc. I completely forgot these were in here. That's that's pretty cool. Nice little bonus there. Uh, that they did that. So, um, obviously, when they were doing quite well, because uh, that that would be kind of an expensive pack-in to throw into all these sets. Look at that artwork. That is just freaking beautiful. That is so badass. Just amazing. Love the packaging on these sets. Um, and then, again, we have the wraparound cover. we got Prince Lotor and Queen Merla. And then Keith and the Black Lion. We got Hagar disguised as the uh, the goddess that uh, basically uh, was responsible for splitting Voltron into the Five Lions originally. Kind of weird they put that on the last set instead of the beginning because that's really from the origin story. But uh, anyway, so we got uh, Black Lion. I think I forgot to show you the red one, didn't I? Well, we're going to be cracking it open briefly to get the uh, uh, booklets out again anyway. And the same Media Blasters catalog again. So finally, we have the uh, last batch of, hold on a second here, there we go, the last batch of episodes, discs 13, 14, and 15, there we go, and uh, yeah, here we go, very nice, and apparently no more story about the restoration, I guess that story was completed in the last set. So I'm just going to set the uh, the booklets aside here. I probably should have done that as I went, but, uh, you know, hindsight, 2020, and all that jazz. And we'll put these in here. That's so cool they included those. I don't think I've ever watched that tweeny witch thing. Um, so we'll just get the, uh, the red set out here. Quickly give you a look at the... Uh, the red Voltron. There you go. 
We've now seen all of them. <laughs> of course, Voltron was never a single primary color. He was always the uh, combination of colors. Okay. So we're going to uh, pull way, whoop, way back here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit them all in, but we'll try. All right, so we'll uh, just, uh, I'll be back in a second. Ta-da! There we go. So sets one, two, three, four, five, all 72 episodes of Voltron Lion Force. All right, so I pulled out all of the uh, the booklets here. We're just going to take a quick look at uh, at all the extras. So here we go. So set one contains the original pilot, the Voltron Trilogy. Yes, there was actually going to be a third Voltron. They ultimately decided not to bother. Besides, they also didn't expect Lion Force to be as massive a hit as it was. So they thought, you know what? Why don't we just do more Lion Force episodes instead of adapting yet another series and having to pay more license fees? So they just abandoned that one. But you can catch some glimpses of it in that pilot uh thing where it talks about how um there was going to be a voltron from e each voltron is going to be from a different universe there's the near universe which i think was vehicle voltron there was the far universe which was uh lion force voltron and then there was like the middle universe or something which was going to be the third one so uh so it's kind of interesting and, and also you notice the the editing and the dialogue and everything is a little bit different in the pilot version as well uh, so this also includes staff interviews, making of the DVDs, the 5.1 surround mix, which I talked about before, and episode synopses with original air dates. And that's basically what's in the booklet. So set two has uh, a Buckethead music video. I'm not sure what that's all about. Uh, an international Voltron featurette, exclusive staff interview, TV ads, a the 5.1 surround mix, of course, and episode synopses with original air dates. Uh, set 3. Set 3 contains an interview with Murphy Lee, 1984 newsreels, exclusive composer interview, so an interview with the guy who does the music. I love the music in this, by the way. This has such a great score to it. Um, I actually do have the soundtrack CD as well. It's fantastic. Uh, TV ads, the 5.1 surround mix, and episode synopses with original air dates. So, set four has an interview with the voice actors. Hey, there you go. That's actually a really fun interview because they talk about how uh, there was a lack of female voice actors, but there was an abundance of female characters. So, you'll notice a lot of the times they just have the male actors doing girl voices for the female characters. And they just don't even think twice about it. They just went for it. And it's it's pretty funny to hear them uh, sort of talk about how that came about. Um, got a season three featurette. So all about how uh, basically the third season came about with them doing the uh, the Queen Merla episode. So basically season one was Lion Force. Season two was Vehicle Force. Season three was um, the uh, Queen Merla Lion Force episodes. Uh, Man on the Street, Voltron Memories, a photo gallery, and of course the 5.1 surround mix and episode synopsis with original air dates. And then finally, set five features lost footage of season three, the lost episode, vehicle team preview, history of world events productions, a go lion preview, digital comic trailer, and the 5.1 surround mix and episode synopsis with original air dates. So quite a multitude of extras across the sets there definitely a huge treat for voltron fans in particular what i found really fascinating was seeing uh just kind of the the origins and how the series evolved as they were developing it and how things changed over the course of that and then also just getting into you know the the influence that it had so, yeah, if you luck out and find these in the wild, absolutely get them. They are beautiful, beautiful sets. Um, absolutely will, will please any fan of Voltron um, or just, you know, giant robot mecha anime. Uh, it, it's just a really fun series, a great trip down memory lane, and just an absolutely beautiful set. 
And hey, since I mentioned it, here's the soundtrack CD. Oh, I was so happy to when they put this out, because as I said, I always really loved the music. But look, I mean, there's so many tracks on here. Basically, all the familiar cuts from the show that uh, you recognize, they're all on here. There's uh, the theme, both with and without narration, and all kinds of, there's some bonus tracks, and basically a lot of the huge selection of uh, the incidental music and such. And it's falling out of the case. Hold on a second. Let's just, there we go. All right, so very nice uh, CD with the uh, the logo on there, basically the the symbol of the the castle, and we got the primary villains there: got Prince Lotor, King Zarkon, Hagar the Witch. And there we go. And then here, not much. It's not a booklet or anything, but uh, we do have a nice little interview with the uh, composer. Well, not really interview, but he just kind of talks about making the music and stuff like that, which is uh, pretty cool. So they didn't use the original music from Go Lion or Die Rugger because, well, a couple reasons. I mean, they wanted to have kind of a unified score, uh, music score for it, as I say, much much like Robotech did, where they did a whole new music for it. Uh, but also they wanted to have it in stereo, so they wanted to have stereo music to uh, really emphasize the, the stereo sound. Uh, so that was another reason they wanted to do a whole new score was basically just to, you know, have another layer of stereoness to the stereoness. <laughs> Not to mention it's it's a fantastic score. I mean, it really, you know, gets you pumped and ready for action. There's great, you know, action bits and uh, gloom and doom bits and uh, heroes in peril bits and funny bits and there's just so many bits. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, if you love the show. Grab the soundtrack if you can find it. It's uh, it's great stuff and sure to please any Voltron fan. And there you have it. Now, the sad part of the story is, needless to say, these are long out of print. You can still find them out there. So by all means, hunt around for them. See if you can track them down. Because if you're a Voltron fan, you absolutely want these in your collection. I mean, they look great on the shelf. Wonderful display pieces. And the presentation of the show is just second to none. It's fantastic. There was talk of doing Blu-ray releases of this a while back, but for whatever reason, it never happened. And I think Media Blasters is actually no more now. So who knows where those beautifully remastered masters have gone. I'm sure they're around somewhere. But uh, there was a couple of re-releases of Lion Force Voltron on DVD. There was one re-release that was basically the tin sets without the tins. So pretty much the same packaging, all the same on-disc content. You just didn't get the nice fancy tins. But otherwise, exactly the same uh, same interior package art and everything like that. But then there was a later, almost budget release, where Lion Force was released in two sets. Basically just Lion Force Part 1 and Part 2. And I heard they really skimped on the packaging on those. Here's what the covers look like. Apparently, it was kind of similar to the Milk Creek sets. I don't know if they were, like, on a spindle inside or they were in paper sleeves or something. But it was really, like, cheap packaging, apparently. But the sets themselves were fairly cheap. But at least it gave you an option if you had missed out on the other sets and just wanted the show in your collection. They never re-released Vehicle Force Voltron. It only ever had the one release. And they also never re-released the original Japanese shows either they only got the one release that they got which is which is unfortunate and uh, as i think i mentioned earlier media blasters is basically gone now uh, as is their their sort of sister label anime works so who knows i'm sure we'll see voltron appear on home video at some point again in some form what that will be only the future knows yeah, so it, it seems kind of up in the air as to when we'll get another re-release of Lion Force. In the meantime, if you can find these, hopefully without breaking the bank, I highly recommend getting them because they're terrific sets. Alrighty, folks, that is it for this week. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you again next week for part two of our massive closer look at the Voltron series is 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 on DVD. And uh, yeah, until then, thanks for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors. And sayonara.
shopping, skin slip. Hope you had a cucktastic time. The term cuck has essentially lost all meaning with its excessive and incorrect use by vitriolic people who are unable to form coherent thoughts. Cuck is kink shaming and not much of an insult. That's true. Not my thing, but if it's your thing, well, enjoy. Did them? I. I. I, uh, I don't understand. So this will be another three parter, so enjoy. Welcome back, everybody. Except you. I hate you. You know who you are. Way back in the day, in the early to, well, I guess early 80s. And what Mirai Robo Daltanius was, was what, was, 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 was. <laughs> Fuck, can you just stop rambling and get to the point? God damn it. One of them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna redo that. That was too rambly. Okay, so we've looked after, look. So that's right. For that. Now they're not just gonna, they, they want to do this as something. Blah, 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 blah. Ah, itchy balls. Got uh, Prince Locor. Locor. 